During the early 1920s, the world was mesmerized by King Tut. A British archaeologist, Howard Carter, discovered the young pharaoh's tomb in Egypt's Valley of the Kings, 1922. But the public wasn't only interested in gold and jewelry. The press wrote about the curse of the pharaohs. But was it true? Was an ancient curse really the reason everyone entering the pyramids lost their lives? At the time, this was the only explanation for a series of unexplained passings. The man present at the opening of King Tut's burial chamber, George Herbert V, Earl of Carnarvon, lived only five more months after the discovery. He had also sponsored the dig. In comes Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. You probably know of him, the English writer behind Sherlock Holmes. He claimed that an evil elemental caused the explorer's demise. He must have been joking, right? Unfortunately, no. The newspapers continued to blame the pharaoh's curse after every Egyptologist left this world. These are the scientists who study the ancient cultures of Egypt. The archaeologist who opened King Tutankhamun's tomb passed away full 17 years after the discovery. The reason for it wasn't a secret, Hodgkin's disease. Yet again, journalists around the world wrote of a curse. This was getting ridiculous. But science must have had a rational explanation, right? Well, it did. And that explanation was common mold. Harmful fungi, Aspergillus, can survive for ages in sealed tombs. When humans inhale them, there's a high risk of infection in people who have a weakened immune system. Today, doctors believe this is what happened to the unfortunate explorer more than a century ago. Scientists now know that this type of fungi grows especially well on grain. And King Tut's tomb was full of offerings in the form of baskets full of raw grain and bread. Researchers discovered other varieties of fungi on ancient Egyptian mummies. These molds can easily cause some nasty consequences for humans. The danger of rotting organic material is real. Just look inside your fridge. Any food leftovers you have there start to go off after just three to four days. You can imagine what happens to food in a sealed chamber after thousands of years. Food is just one kind of organic material. There is also wood. If you expose it to water or even moisture in the air, it starts to deteriorate. You don't have to travel to Egypt to see the effects of this process. Any abandoned building in your neighborhood can serve as an example. When a piece of wood gets wet and has no way of drying out, there is going to be damage. From fungi to wood-boring insects, the list is long. Rotten wood presents a huge structural issue. Beams and floor panels are all made of timber, so you better not go inside a failing building. You can easily lose your footing. But this is just the tip of the iceberg. The building materials since the time of the pharaohs have changed, but so have the dangers. One of the best examples is asbestos. Until the 1970s, most home insulation materials contained this substance. It was in everything, from boilers to soundproofing. This microfiber provided excellent heat insulation. But then, the United States banned asbestos in 1989. The UK did the same a decade later. The reason for it is that asbestos becomes a health hazard when it gets damaged. When humans inhale asbestos fibers, they can get seriously sick. Abandoned strictures are full of this material, and there is no one to maintain them. You see the danger now. Another material is also common in old buildings, lead. Ancient Romans used lead piping to channel spring water into their homes. They also cooked in lead vessels, which was probably not the wisest of choices. You see, lead and water don't go well together because of something called corrosion. But this problem isn't ancient. US officials banned lead piping only in 1986. That means that 7% of American households still have lead service lines. And this is not the only source of poisoning. Until the mid-1960s, builders used lead paint to coat woodwork. In abandoned buildings, this lead coating snapped a long time ago. Anyone who touches doors and windows will disturb this lead dust and inhale it. The dust particles are at least visible to an unaided eye. This is not the case for carbon monoxide. This gas has no color, so you can't see it. It has no odor, so you can't smell it. No way to detect a carbon monoxide leak at all. And how does this dangerous gas usually escape? Poor maintenance. Well, abandoned buildings have zero maintenance. One second, you could be exploring an old factory, and the next you could feel dizzy with and have a terrible headache. These are just some of the symptoms of CO poisoning, the less severe ones. But what is the source? 
All it takes is for an old boiler to finally give way after years of neglect. We've reached an important question. What is the main factor in air quality inside a room? If you are thinking the level of oxygen, try again. It turns out that oxygen levels drop by only 0.3% in 8 hours inside an airtight room. This is a room in which doors and windows are sealed with tape. So, the decrease is even smaller in normal conditions. Oxygen isn't the main problem. The levels of carbon dioxide rise sharply inside a sealed room. This is the direct result of human breathing. We inhale oxygen and exhale CO2. Think of it as a waste gas. Normally it's only a tiny portion of the air we breathe 0.04%. But in a sealed room, high levels of carbon dioxide will make you feel drowsy. And that's the last thing you need when inside a dilapidated building. Carbon dioxide will decrease your ability to think clearly. Researchers from Harvard did an interesting study in 2016. They had office workers come in six days in a row to complete a problem-solving test. During the week, they gradually raised the carbon dioxide levels in the mock-up office. The results of the same test kept getting worse over time. There are many factors at play, but CO2 levels definitely had an impact on the workers' problem-solving ability. The test took place inside a typical office environment, not inside a crumbling building where visitors must watch their every step. When I say visitors, I really mean trespassers. And trespassing is a criminal offense in the United States. This goes both for private and public property. If you defy the law, you can be fined up to $5,000 or even face lockup time. That should make you think twice before jumping over a fence with a no trespassing sign. But again, you might not be the only one inside. You can never know who else is in the building. Perhaps a person up to no good? It doesn't have to be a person at all. Animals can pose a threat as well. You would be startled if you saw a rat, for example. But the poor animal would be scared as well. It might bite you. The list of diseases rats carry is pretty long. But rodents' teeth can cause other forms of damage. They grow constantly, so the animal has to constantly nibble on something to stop them from overgrowing. If you ever felt peckish at 1 a.m., you know the feeling. Electric cables are high on the rodent's menu. Abandoned buildings have plenty of those. Old wiring is dangerous on its own. Structures erected before 1984 often used wires made out of aluminum. Today, copper is the standard because an aluminum wire is 55 times more likely to catch on fire than a copper one. Flipping a switch in a rundown building can cost you your life. Be on alert for telltale signs that something is wrong. Lights that flicker, sparks from sockets, and the smell of smoke. And yeah, don't count on an earth cable to protect you from electrocution. Ground cables became standard only in the 1960s. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.